Dave, always good to talk to you, and I guess I should say happy birthday to you. Well, happy birthday to the National Rifle Association. This is our 140th year, and uh, it's been quite quite a ride, you might say, because, uh, you know, the NRA was formed right after the Civil War in New York by Union officers who were concerned by the fact that many of the recruits uh, into the Northern armies came from the cities and really didn't know much about firearms. They were from Europe, were uh, immigrants, and didn't, uh, didn't have a familiarity with guns. Uh, and after the war, it was decided that there needed to be an association so that American civilians could be familiar with firearms, with firearm safety, and could develop the skills necessary to use firearms in an emergency. And that's where the NRA came in. And for the first hundred years, uh, that's what we did. Yeah, and uh, it's the, amazing. You know, you look at it, as you said, it started out as a training effort, and it has grown into a grassroots effort that every, you know, if it wasn't for the NRA and, and what it does and the people around the country that fight every day, where would our Second Amendment be? That's exactly right. You know, for the first hundred years of our existence, we didn't have to get into those fights because mm -hmm. there was pretty much unanimous agreement among all factions and all different uh, parties in this country that the Second Amendment uh, meant exactly what it said, that the founders guaranteed us the right to keep and bear arms. It wasn't until the cultural wars of the late 60s that things began to change, and there became a real effort to restrict Second Amendment rights. Uh, in uh, 1968, the uh, Gun Control Act of 68 was passed. A couple of years later, Richard Nixon's Attorney General, Elliot Richardson, promulgated a plan to confiscate all handguns by the early 80s. Those things didn't happen, and they didn't happen because the NRA was there and because gun owners and Second Amendment supporters demanded that the association stand up for the Second Amendment. And the NRA remade itself in those years so that it wasn't just an organization to support competitive shooting, to provide technical assistance to gun owners and gunsmiths, or to, or to provide safety education to children and the rest. It became the strongest and most effective advocacy organization in American history. And as a result, I think it's a pretty good birthday present that uh, yesterday the House of Representatives uh, passed the, the reciprocity for concealed carry owners. Now, if we can get it through the Senate, uh, that's going to be very good. And today, on the House side, uh, they're voting on appropriations bills that include many riders that will strengthen Second Amendment rights. Those things are possible because of the NRA and the new NRA, which has become the strong voice for American gun owners and for the Second Amendment. But that wouldn't have been possible if it, if it hadn't come into existence 140 years ago and if we hadn't been there when that need made itself clear in the late 1960s. That is so true. But, you know, you look at the NRA, and it is the organization still that members of law enforcement look to and they depend on for their training. That's exactly right, Jenny. You know, just the other day I was speaking at uh, Northern Michigan University which is uh, in Marquette, Michigan, in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, and as I finished my speech, uh, a police officer came in. He said, look, I'm on duty, but I heard you were here, and I just wanted to stop by and shake your hand and thank you for what you and everybody else at the NRA do. We have relied during those 140 years for many of our members, for, for people who served in the military service and law enforcement. Uh, and uh, they make up a good part of the NRA membership, along with hunters and people interested in self-defense and competitive shooters and the like. Uh, but uh, when you go around the country as an NRA spokesman, uh, law enforcement officials uh, are there. They support you. They appreciate what we do because it's for them and for every citizen in this country. Absolutely. And when you look at Camp Perry, 1956, you know why when we go there now, the camaraderie is so strong because the history is so strong. That's right. And remember, Jenny, uh, in 1968, after the Gun Control Act of 68 was passed, in the years prior to that, uh, it was a partnership with the federal government. In 1968, uh, the Congress, uh, during the Johnson administration, cut off all funds to Camp Perry. And it became a partnership, really, between the NRA, the Ohio National Guard, and the Civilian Marksmanship Program. And we stepped up to the plate to save the national matches that were held at Camp Perry and are still held there today. Yeah. And talking about how times change, I was reading today where in 1903, the NRA Secretary Albert Jones urged the establishment of rifle clubs at all major colleges 
and universities, and you look at today and you've got college students that are fighting to be able to carry a firearm for self-defense on their campuses. That's right, and it, you know, it, it's almost impossible. Back in, in the in the early days and, and uh, in the up into the 40s, 50s, and even 60s, uh, high schools had shooting teams, and, and they were very popular. Today, in urban centers, you can't have things mm -hmm. like that. No. Uh, and what's happened is there's, there's part of the concerted effort against the Second Amendment has been directed at depriving young people of opportunities to familiarize themselves with firearms and get into the shooting sports. You know, it's once once a young person goes hunting or once they get a chance to shoot at a range and to experience the, uh, the, the really the joy and the pleasure of using firearms, they're hooked. And so part of the effort of our opponents has been to find as many ways as they can to prevent young people from ever getting involved in the shooting sports because they know if they can do that, they can reduce our numbers. And when they reduce them below a certain critical point, they'll have the political clout to do what they want. Yeah, and I know that is why it is so important to you to get the young folks out there and get them involved and, and make sure we know where, you know, our rights are headed with the next generation. That's exactly right. That's a, we've got two, we've got, I've, I've said that we've got two problems. We've got, uh, uh, the major problem, of course, is our ideological enemies who would like to deprive Americans of the right to keep and bear arms. Our second problem is the uh, electronic games and the like that, uh, that, that so, that so sort of mesmerize kids that they won't go outdoors. Yeah. Uh, and if we can overcome those two problems, then the Second Amendment is going to be safe for our children and our grandchildren. Yeah, and Dave, before I let you go, and the importance of the NRA, all you have to go is to the U.N. and talk to people like Tony Bernardo from Canada, and they look right at you and you say, they say, if it wasn't for the NRA, where would our firearm freedoms be? Well, that's exactly right. You know, uh, if uh, if you were around in the late 1960s, and and you, of course, Jenny, were very young, <laughs> but but for those of us who were around, I was just no one would have predicted that today there'd be concealed carry laws in 49 states. Yeah. No one would have predicted uh, that uh, the Second Amendment would be as secure as it is. It's under threat. Uh, we could lose our rights very easily after the next election if things go badly. But if you were there in 1968, 1970, you would be, you would, if somebody in a time machine came from then to yeah. now, they would be amazed that we have what we have because most people then thought that by today, uh, the Second Amendment would be a dead letter. Absolutely. And thanks for all you do. And you're out there enjoying your uh, fire and freedoms right now. You betcha. I'm out on the uh, eastern shore of Maryland uh, at the Grand National Waterfowl Hunt. And I can't think of a better way to celebrate the 140th birthday of the National Rifle Association.